Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to do a short little video on scroll snapping. And uh, you may have been on a site before where you start to scroll and it snaps to a section of a page. Now this can be kind of annoying, so I'm going to show you how to uh, give the user some preference here. Uh, but you've got a few options. You've got vertical, you've got horizontal, and then you've also got this is mandatory, it always will snap, versus proximity, where once you get a little bit closer, if you're in the middle, it's not going to do anything. If you get a little bit closer, it'll then snap down. So I'm going to show you how to get this started. And uh, let's just start with this Emmet abbreviation. And we're going to call this document scroll uh, snap. And then inside the body here, we're going to use Emmet and have a section, well, several sections. They're all going to have the class of child on them. And then inside of them, they're going to have a paragraph. Uh, and we're going to just number, put a number inside each of those. Let's just have six of these. If you don't know how to do this, this is just Emmet, and I've done a video on it recently on the channel. And you see it gives me those numbers, one, two, three, four, five, all the way down. So if I expand this out and open this up with Live Server, which is an extension you can get with VS Code, uh, you'll now see them over this way. All right, so now what we're going to do is add a little bit of styling, and this will just we'll just do it in page here to keep everything uh, compressed. And I'm going to have a border box. Let's see, box sizing will be a border box. And then I'll do a margin of zero and padding of zero. All right, next what we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, let's see, let's go to our child tag here. And we're going to say we need a min height of 100 view height so they each take up the full height of this, the page. Then let's do font size of like 5 rem, something like that. So you can definitely see those numbers. And then we'll do a display of grid and we'll do place uh, items center. Now, right now, if I start to scroll, you'll see they're all just white, so it's going to be hard to tell where one starts and one stops. There's a cool little site called conic.style. Even though it says conic.css up here, I'm not sure why it does that. But anyhow, it's conic.style. And you can come in here and just copy one of these. So uh, let's see. Let's grab this blue-violet one. And uh, now we can come in here and say, let's say the uh, background is conic gradient. Now, if I do that, obviously, they're all going to now be that. So... We need to figure out how to, I guess there's a little bit of a distinction there, but not enough. So let's just come down here instead and say we want the child, and then we'll take the nth of type, and we'll do two n, so every other one, and this is where we'll add the background. So if I save it there, now you see the second, the fourth, and the sixth one will all have that. The other ones will just be white. Okay, so now when it comes to adding this scroll snapping behavior, the parent and the child both need some properties. So we're going to start with the parent. And weirdly enough, you can't use body. At least I can't get it to work with body. So there's some kind of funky stuff with this. But you can use an HTML or some other div. Since we've got the HTML, we'll just say scroll snap type. And then we can add a couple of different options here. So you'll see it's telling us we could do mandatory or proximity. Those are the two I showed you earlier. And then we also get to choose an axis. So you can define that axis either as Y, that's up and down, X, that's left and right, or you can actually use block and inset, uh, which more logical properties depending on the user's browser, or you can do both so that it snaps both ways. That would be if you had like a bunch of cards or something like that. To keep it simple though, let's go Y and let's go mandatory to start with. Now, nothing happens yet because I need to actually add something to the children as well. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say scroll snap align for the children. And I've got a couple options here as well, but we're going to start with start. That will be the top of that section. So if I save it and I come over this way and I start to scroll, it's going to snap back up to the top. So that's all you've got to do. Um, and it's always going to snap to the closest section. Because we did mandatory here, it's always going to do it no matter what. If we change this to proximity, then it would actually not do it in the middle here, but as we get closer to the bottom, now it's gonna snap down. I mentioned that not everybody likes this kind of thing, and especially people who have prefers reduced motion on. So what you can do is, is actually open up the dev tools, and if you hit Command Shift P on a Mac, I don't know what it is on Windows, uh, you can come in here and now let's look at the rendering panel. So we'll say show rendering, and that will show it down here. And then there's a bunch of things you can do. This is in Chrome. Uh, what you can do is force emulation for a bunch of things. The thing we're interested in is, let's see, feature contrast, reduced motion. So we could say we want them to prefer reduced motion. If I refresh here, it should actually prefer reduced motion. And I come in here, and it's still snapping. So what we can do is we can wrap this in a media tag instead. So let's take all of this, and we'll say media, screen, 
And then what we're looking at is and prefers reduced motion. And I'm going to just choose for no preference. So in other words, if somebody has a preference, this is not going to trigger. So if they say, hey, I don't want motion, it's not going to do anything. And now let's paste that back in this way. Now, if I come over here and I start to scroll, I've got reduced motion on, nothing's going to happen. So as a user scrolls, they're just going to interact with your web page like normal. If I now turn this off, you'll see it now snaps immediately to that next section. All right, so by locking it in this media query, we actually give the user some preference in how that works. Right, now, there are a couple other things I want to show you. Uh, let's first of all start with uh, the x-axis, and we'll do proximity as well. Or we could do, let's do block, all right, just to use the uh, logical property there. Uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the body uh, needs to be a display of flex. And then let's take these children and not only have them in height, but we're going to have them in width. And this will be 100% view width. So now as I come here and I start to scroll this way, I should get close and it should snap. All right, maybe this block isn't working. Let's try it with the X. It is working with the X. Maybe I just wasn't close enough. Let's try again. Block. Oh, I'm left and right. This needs to be in line. <laughs> All right. So now I come in here and I should be able to snap this way. Yeah, and it snaps over. Okay. So in line is uh, this way. Block would be obviously the blocked sections up and down. So you can see it works that way as well. And by snapping it each of these ways, let's change this to mandatory so it always snaps. And it just snaps wherever I let go. There's one other thing I want to show you, which is what happens if you have a header that's fixed. So let's get rid of all of that. And I'm going to come up here. And let's add a header. So we'll have a header. And it's just going to have the content of a fixed header. All right. So with that, let's come down here and grab that. So we'll say header. This needs to be position of fixed. And we want it to be top zero. Let's go ahead and set a mandatory height on it of like four rem. You probably wouldn't do that, but just to, so we know exactly what that size is. Uh, place items center here and display of grid. And now you see it's right here. And let's go ahead and add a background color to it. Let's grab another conic gradient. Let's see, we've got this one. Let's see, is there anything that works with that or doesn't work with it that clashes? Let's get this super clashy color. <laughs> All right, so we'll go background and we'll add that in. All right, now let's come back over this way. Okay, there it is. We need a width on that, so a width of 100%. All right, so there it is, and as I scroll, it should stay there. Now what happens when I come here and I start to snap is it snaps, but it actually covers up a section of the section. All right, so we need to be able to add some padding here, and you can do that with one other property. And because this scroll snapping is only happening in this media query, let's go ahead and just add uh, scroll padding here. So we'll do scroll padding, and this is top here of four rem because that's the size of that fixed header. And now when I do that and I start to scroll, you'll see that when it does snap, it actually snaps right there rather than covering up this section. So that's one of their little gotcha that is helpful to know with scroll padding. Now, there are some oddities with how this works. As you've already seen, you can't do it on the body for some reason. And uh, there's just some other weird things. So in addition to this MDN doc, I'm also going to reference the CSS Tricks uh, article that's really helpful. It walks through a bunch of stuff and then gives you four, I think, four or five really good examples here. So I'm going to drop this in here, too, if you have interest in that. And I'll also throw on this conic.style if you want to play around with that. All right, thanks so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.